Feinberg, Feinberg from Stockbridge, uh, from the, representing the administration, Bruce Labs, uh, Bonnie Bourne, and uh, Lindy, Set, Lindy Stetson. Uh, moderating the meeting is Ray Balu. I'd say that because I saw something in a VSBA email or maybe on uh, Digger that talked about how we're supposed to be really more formal with these uh, uh, recorded virtual meetings about making sure that we're aware of who's attending and a little more, a little more uh, 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 by the book. So, great. Uh, I'll see how well I do on that. Um, so, do we uh, have any adjustments to the agenda? Did the policies make it on there or not? I think no. there were some that were emailed to you. Um, we, the policy committee, did, and I or Christy did actually. I'm just not sure whether you got them or not. Uh, Right. Um, the big thing is, is policies, at least policies for approval, <laughs> um, cannot be, uh, can't be done unless they're warned. I know that. I right. wonder, are they on the agenda? I no. do not see them. They are not. I can't see the whole agenda. So they are I, not. So we'll have to do they it next make, time. They do not make the agenda, and we unfortunately cannot add them, but. Um, the agenda, we're discussing the budget, budget uh, a teacher uh, laptop replacements, distance learning report, grade configuration, and a building use request. Those are the five items that made it on the, on the uh, uh, agenda, as well as... I have a, I have a need the, to speak with you in non-public about an issue, and I would like everybody to be a part of that. Okay. Um, um, who is taking minutes? Well, that's a good point. Jenny's not here. <laughs> I've got it up on my computer, if that works. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Lindy. Keeps me um, focused. <laughs> it's hard at these virtual meetings. Yeah, yeah, and especially, you know, these school board ones are often like my, my at least second or third, fourth one of the day. And like my ears, I can't, I, I can't wear earbuds that much. I don't know how kids do it. I don't know how those kids do it. Um. We have the consent agenda, um, and we're going to add an executive session for a personnel matter, Bruce? Yes. So we'll add, uh, uh, at, at item 11, uh, we'll add a, an executive session. Um, Timekeeping. Uh, one of the things, my experience, virtual meetings are hard uh, to, to go as long as an in-person meeting. So I, uh, I would encourage us to, uh, to, to go as quickly as we can. Uh, budget discussion, 20 minutes, 15 minutes? Sure, I think 20 minutes will do it. Okay, uh, the teacher computers, five? Uh, yep, that should be fine. Um, distance learning, online teaching, 10. Sure. Um, grade configuration, probably 10 as well, 10, 15. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then building use request, I'm thinking could be another five. Yeah, that'll be, that will be quick, uh, Carl. Okay. And, and Ethan, can we, uh, 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 press you into service to, to be our stern timekeeping taskmaster? Um, go ahead. Okay, excellent. Um, we have uh, uh, a consent agenda to approve the minutes of Tuesday, March 4th, Friday, March 20th, and Tuesday, April 7th. I think I think we figured out last time that February fourth was already approved. Do I recall that from our March meeting or from our April meeting? Yep. Um, and I thought actually we approved the special meeting minutes on the on the. I I think the only minutes we actually really have to, to approve because uh, we didn't get uh, 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 Christy didn't drop them off. Or the April seventh. Yeah, and we haven't seen those yet. Right. I, I I think 
uh, I, I would suggest we table the minutes until uh, yeah, we have, have our next me meeting, and we can have hopefully Jenny here to 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 to, to have sorted. And let's let's. Uh, yeah. I will send a note to Christy to ask her to to check the status of those first two. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, board comment. Um. I think we'll probably. Um, cover most One. everything for everything else. I don't think I have anything extra ad to add. Does anyone else? Um, I, I no, like we can't. Maybe type it. But I, just, yeah, Ethan, we're not. You're oh, you're cutting out. Okay, I don't know what to do about. It. Maybe you can type it in the comments or. Yeah, maybe. Uh, not on this. Here. Can you um, reach the? Can you maybe call in on your phone and reach the uh, audio number? Either. Mm. Uh, um, yeah. Well, that limits comment. <laughs> better that seemed clear um, yeah. um can you maybe try turning off your camera see if see if just going to audio uh, uh reduces bandwidth that's command e or control e yeah I, I am concerned we have pretty much any building building use. Oh, uh, yeah. Discussing uh, discussing what's going on with with our building use. Um, yeah. yeah, we can we can uh, uh, have some some board discussion of, of of where we stand with that, and that's pro probably actually something that that I should have uh, uh, added at the adjustment as a formal as a formal item because we have to we have to reconcile or figure out how we want to move uh, 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 forward yes. with this and it's really hard you know I uh, when I when I contemplate trying to have a community uh, a mediated community meeting over over zoom or, or Google meet but at the same time i don't know that we can say well we can just kick this can down the road and we'll just try to operate two buildings again for a year so my fear is i think we're already looking at a zero budget and we still don't even know what our budget's going to be ethan i'm not understanding you you phase in and out i don't i don't understand you uh, all right let me try something else I'll be back. So a couple things. Um, you're talking about kicking the can down the road. Um, one of the things I want to say in my report is to talk about the annual meeting, your annual meeting. And uh, um, I don't want to put it in here, but. Um, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's the, 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 if you looked at the report from the joint fiscal office that's on the legislative website that came out at the end of the month, there's they're they're projecting that in the for for the the, the next round of taxes there's going to be a seventeen cent tax twenty five Carl. Okay, well the 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 end of April numbers are on the website. But thanks for yeah. me up like that. Yeah, twenty five right now. Which is the latest? Which is the information that was given out yesterday at the uh, second uh, conference on uh, finance? Hmm. So. 
Carl, it, it, I don't know that it will that it will help clarify the discussion around the high school building. But when we talk about um, implications for for reopening and moving forward, some of the things that Lindy and I will share um, will at least give it some more context. So maybe you want to kind of have that discussion after we share some thoughts that we're hearing about possible openings. Oh. Open oh. So Sarah's on with us now. Um, so let me get the agenda back open. Um, we've tabled the minutes. We're going to have board comment towards the end after we've gone through the discussion items, and that will include a conversation about uh, the building. Um, so now we're into uh, reports to the board. So it's technically Bruce first, but um, uh, uh, whoever, uh, if, the, if the spirit moves uh, Lindy and Bonnie to go first or Tara to go first, whatever. It's, it's, I only have a couple things. I think you guys feel pretty much up to date with a lot of the things that I have to say because of our meetings that are going on weekly. Um, just two things, really. Um, the negotiations uh, progress, uh, and I'm not going to get a, into too much detail here. But the committee is going to meet after our Thursday meeting, um, and we're going to put um, Dina on with the with the executive or the negotiating committee members at 6:45 on Thursday, uh, so that we can decide on uh, strategic planning. I guess you would want to say about how we're going to do make uh, our next uh, move, whatever that is. Okay. Uh, so um, that's one thing, Carl, that you'll want to know about or whoever is representing. Yeah, no, I'm going to be, I, I will definitely be there. I wanted to know uh, while we're talking about negotiations. So we, the, the, the they, they've gone and they've settled um, the uh, health uh, insurance. Care. Yes. Yeah. As so of what I want to know about is, I think it's really, you know, speaking of affecting our budget, you understand that now support staff have the ability to take a family plan which costs us 80% of that family plan. And the family mm -hmm. plan, last time I checked, were about 18 grand. Now, I don't know, you know, how many, I mean, our, our thinking has always been, well, you know, we, we weren't sure how many of support staff would opt into that plan. We'd always tried to, at least in the past, encourage them to take Dr. Dinosaur. Um, but, I mean, knowing, knowing what our potential exposure is, how many, you know, how many of our support staff uh, are, are eligible for that and how many might want to take it really, you know, c concerns me because healthcare is such a giant part of our cost. And I also want to make sure that we understand, you know, I, I recall Tara saying something along uh, around the idea that the, the way that part of what was a, made, made uh, funding those uh, 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 contributions was that we weren't sure what the agreement was and, 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 and how that you know, was handled in terms of first in and first out and who pays first dollar and some of that stuff, you know, do, 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 do does knowing the settlement of that agreement mean that we're going to have a, a cleaner idea of, of, of healthcare costs in, in, in our budget? And will it change, how much will it change our budget? Because we're like a hundred bucks a kid below penalty right now. You, I don't know. The first thing you brought up is not something I, think we know which which is who would take who from the support staff would take the bigger plan i don't think we know that and we we're going to need to collect that information i would I think suggest, bruce the, the fastest way to get that would be to say if we sent out i mean they're going to find out from from the union but if we send out a note saying here's the packet around the, the you know if you want the packet around getting family care reach out to us you know, um, and then sent them the, the 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 information from the insurance company. We're not, you know, we're not violating any, you know, violating any kind of employer employee uh, relationship. I'm sure we apply we we supply insurance documents already, and just finding out who might want those documents might give us might give us a preliminary, you know, broad strokes clue um, as to uh, where our exposure might be. Well, if that's something that you want us to do, we'll do that. Um, I guess um, you did, uh, Tara did, uh, put in your uh, budgets 
a pretty hefty amount. Uh, I think it was 12.7 and the settlement was 12.9. So um, I don't want to say a whole lot on, on this conference call, but uh, basically I think we were conservative and did put in a healthy amount so that it shouldn't be too terribly taxing on your, on your budgets other than what's already there. Um, Tara, do you want to comment on any of that? The budgets were only based on current enrollment and has nothing to do with potential projections on who's going to sign up for health insurance. I don't have a crystal ball, so I didn't do that. As far as the HRA is concerned, it's funded based on the enrollment at the time the budget was developed and what tier they were on as to how much they would actually get in their HRA. And then we funded that at the 65% of the potential exposure. Now, does the settlement entitle them, does the settlement entitle them to uh, uh, change their insurance status? Do we have to give them a new enrollment window? And when are we doing that, if, if so? New hires can enroll in July. Otherwise, open enrollment is January. So we start that process in October, November. So there's no there's there's no way that a current employee could could jump on a family plan now. They could the earliest that anyone could 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 access the stuff under the new plan is uh, January. Not true. If they have a life event that's governed by the IRS, they can make a change at any life event. So there is a chance if they have a life event that they could do that, and that life event could be the birth marriage, of the divorce, birth, of a child, death. Yeah. Um, spouse open enrollment or spouse losing employment or loss of other benefits. Any of that is a qualifying life event by the IRS and that would give them the opportunity to change their health plan. <clears throat> okay. And do we have any exposure to the, because I guess it also qualified that people can now, because I know a couple of years ago, there was a whole statement about we didn't have, we, we didn't or we shouldn't cover people that didn't work enough, you know, 0.2 FTE, even if they were 0.4 somewhere else and another 0.2 somewhere else, so total they're 0.8 and would be eligible. At one point in time, Donna, a couple of years ago, the IRS were saying we didn't have to pay our share of that, but now this document seems to say that we do, and we do have part-time teachers. Is that, do we already cover their, their partial FTEs now? Um, will that change? Is that something that- uh, I believe it's 17.5 hours is the minimum amount of hours you can work. I didn't read, unless you change that, I think it's 17.5. So you can prorate the premium. You cannot prorate the contributions to the HRA if they're not a full FTE. So regardless, if they're eligible for benefits and they're enrolled in benefits, you have to fund the HRA to the full extent but you can still prorate the insurance premium. So if they're working 17.5 hours, then they're eligible for health insurance. Okay, and I mean, like, do we, do we I guess what I'm, what I'm most curious about is if, if, if our current, you know, uh, uh, population of, of, of faculty and staff, you know, if, if these changes are, are going to affect our, our, our costs long-term or short-term. And I, I know this just happened. I don't expect you to say yes, Carl. It's going to be four hundred and thirty-seven dollars. But yeah, it just it, happened yesterday. So. Um, I don't know, Terry. You want to answer that, or or what? I mean, I, I don't have a cost figure. No, I'm sorry, Carl. I will work on one in the future, but it's not something I have tonight, and it's not something I will be able to accomplish this week because I am booked the rest of the week doing fiscal year rollover with the software company. She is. Uh, yeah. Extremely busy right now. So I'll tell you that because she won't, but she is. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that all the, I think all of the districts that don't have budgets yet within RSU, uh, FBUD, Stratford, uh, Granville, Hancock, and you guys, uh, three, three out of them, I haven't talked to you guys about this, but I mentioned this last Thursday on the call, there are districts now around the state that are trying to get a budget vote in uh, in May or June. Um, and they've, they've taken the Secretary of State's uh, guidelines for how it might be done. 
and started to implement them. Uh, two of the ones that I know about are South Burlington that are going to hold um, votes in um, three of their schools. Um, some of the guidelines, uh, bring your own pen, wear a, a face mask or shield, social distancing, but they're going to try to get a, get a uh, um, annual meeting in. Uh, I know that Trafford's talking about it. I know that FBUD's talking about it tonight. They're thinking about using the fairgrounds in Tunbridge and spreading people out uh, because they want to speak to their voters. Um, so I guess I'm recommending to you, if you're up for it, maybe there be some planning to try to get a date before the end of June. Um, because quite frankly, um, the Senate's proposal, um, which is uh, holding things steady at the 2020 budget rate um, and allow you to have spending authority after uh, June 30th, um, is not going to help you um, when most of the budgets around the state have gone up about 4%, the ones that have been passed. Um, there are still 19 districts that have not gotten votes done. So I'll leave that in your court, uh, whether you want to do something with that or not. Uh, but it looks like there's movement. Uh, the other one is Essex West. Westford is doing, going to be doing a vote um, as well. Uh, and I know Stafford and F Butter are planning them and, and Jihad's going to have the conversation tomorrow night. So go ahead. Have we gotten the, have we gotten the authorization to do an Australian ballot? We, we, we voted that and we sent that in. Yeah, I, I believe that's been okayed and also ballot by mail. Uh, you believe? That, can be, done. that we, can be done too. Okay, so we do have that authorization or you're not sure yet? I, I believe it was in uh, about a week ago, uh, the approval. I, I can, I'll have to look it up and, and send okay. it to you. We can't do anything if we can't do Australian ballot, so... Yeah, I think I think the idea of trying to get the, the, the I mean, you the, the the state isn't has not lifted the the the, the restriction on on gatherings of more than fifty people, so it doesn't matter if you put them in a, in a in in the Tunbridge Fairgrounds and space them out five feet apart. You can't you still can't get more than fifty. Um, yeah, I think, I think that number was ten to the fifteenth, and the long term number is fifty. Well, we're supposed to get more guidance by the end of the week. Uh, and maybe a lessening of restrictions. We just don't know. We've been told over and over again that something's coming, but we don't know what it is. So, right. Well, what's the ramifications of us waiting longer and just um, till after the first of the till after uh, July right. one? Right. Uh, Eighty-seven percent of your vote that because the other scenarios haven't been approved. Uh, so it would be 87, per, you'd be allowed spending authority with 87% of your vote until you get a budget voted on. They didn't approve any type of level funding. Not yet, that. not yet, but I expect they're, they're pretty polar opposites in, in what they're, the house, the house side wants to, uh, allow the board to pass the budget and allow you spending authority, uh, after July 1, um, they believe that the boards know their budgets and know their voters. As long as that budget is uh, the same as you, um, the same or less uh, than was originally, um, you know, going to be what you put forward to the voters in your case, because you haven't put one in there yet. So yeah, the Brad James memo says that we wouldn't count for that because us in Granville Hancock didn't have. A warned, uh, a warned board. So it's it's it's, Tumbridge could could theoretically, well, I'm sorry, not Tumbridge. People that warned a budget and that that didn't go in front of the voters, could theoretically spend up to that budget. But I mean, I don't think our I I know our community. I, I'm pretty positive, at least the Stockbridge side, they'd be you know if, you know I I think they'd be okay with us spending what we spent last year if the Senate proposal carries in the House. But I really, I, I would be really, really leery of of not going before them to do much of anything beyond beyond that budget. 
you know, we're trying to say we're allowed to. Right. Right. Um, Amy, I think the answer to the question about Australian ballot is that it, you do have the authority to do it, but I will check tomorrow and make sure. Right. Well, I know we had to take a special vote and get, we had to get a specific waiver and I just wanted to. Right. Sure. And there was, there was a, a, Dina had emailed me a letter that I was supposed to, you know, put the, you know, put, put your name here, Carl, kind of one, you right. know, one just, of those documents that got prepared and sent. Okay. I just hadn't heard back if we had gotten it or not. So I just want to make sure before we even talk about it. What would be the ramifications about going uh, a month or two into, I mean, we're not going to spend 87% of our budget in July and August. Don't you, you don't, do we, do we think that by July or August we would be able to, that we're going to be able to get together or is it just so unknown? Everything's unknown. I mean, um, I feel like it's unknown and I've already taken phone calls from community members wondering what the budget is and what the deal is with that. And I, I don't know necessarily about a vote, but they at least want to know what's going on and have information in their hands. I feel like. Okay. Well, I also just want to point out that at seven o'clock, Megan can only be here till what? Seven forty, And the, if she's not here, we won't have a uh, quorum. So just if there is anything we need to vote on, we might want to skip down to it. Yeah, I'm done. I'm no, done. We'll, we'll have a forum because we'll have we have two Stockbridge and two Rochester. Ethan's back. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I, well, I, I'm finished. I, I've told you the things I want you to know. Okay. okay. I just was getting concerned of of, of our. I was just trying to be conscious of our time and getting concerned of. <laughs> no. Good. Glad to see you back, Ethan. Thanks, guys. Um, okay, so that's Bruce, uh, Bonnie and Lindy, or, or uh, Tara, do you want to go? I don't have anything to add, that's just the budget discussion. Okay, thank you, Tara. So, uh, Lindy and Bonnie, you're up. I think you're muted, Bonnie. So did people see the one we sent out with Christie's um, yes, thank you. email? Yep. yep, looks good. I think for the most part, other than budget and um, just to update on distance learning and return to school, uh, do people have questions about the principal's report itself? I don't have anything additional to add to it. Do you, Bonnie? Nope, she's still muted. I got it. There's no, two. I'll do it unless anyone has any questions. No, it seemed uh, it, it seemed pretty pretty clear. How's everyone? You know, everyone's holding up well at all. I mean, your 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 morale's good. People are. Yeah, I think people are doing. I think people are doing remarkably well. There, there are certainly some challenges, but uh, folks are are mobilizing and rising up to meet those challenges. Um, I do think as this wears on, it's becoming more difficult for some parents. So parents who um, were not particularly having difficulty at the start of our of our distance learning are you know, expressing little frustrations, but I think networks, good networks of support have been set up and people are beginning to access them. Would would you agree with that, Lindy? I would. And I would just say that, you know, the same families or kiddos that engagement, not necessarily attendance, but engagement was hard for in the building um, still continues to be a challenge. And we're just trying to work through those on a case by case basis, not that that number is large, but to just really guarantee that there's some continuity of learning happening and how kids are showing that um, has been the biggest. So Lindy, I was on, I was on uh, coaching a teacher today and from Tunbridge and she said, you've been asked to take attendance and that she's doing that for example, even if, you know, she talks to the parent or whatever, she's saying, 
that kid attended? Is that what you guys are doing or what if- Right, it's some sort of contact. And obviously depending on the grade level depends on who and what type of contact that is. Um, and we just kind of have a big spreadsheet going for lack of a better term that Jana and Erica oversee for each building. Um, because it could be with a wide variety of teachers throughout the course of the day. And there's also those families that there's multiple kids in a household. So sometimes that contact for attendance purposes, you know, we don't need mom and dad making four phone calls in a household of four um, when one can count. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I can I think the other thing we discovered, and I think it was discovered in a lot of districts, is in our rush to, to be supportive and make connections, um, we overwhelm some families with our with our attempts at goodness and connectiveness. It took us a, a couple of weeks to get that settled out and scheduled down. I think now people are feeling much more um, that the job is much more doable. We continue to send the message to everybody that um, this is not distance learning that we had a lot of time to plan for. This was really an immediate uh, transition from traditional you know, learning in, under the schoolhouse roof to a distance learning model for which many most uh, weren't prepared. So I think sometimes parents are overly hard on themselves and we spend a fair amount of time helping them understand that uh, there really is no such thing as the perfect distance learning parent and that their best effort, especially if they have multiple children, that their best effort is is certainly more than adequate. Um, so I guess we're doing, I guess what I'm trying to say is we're doing a lot of, of chatting with parents and helping them understand just what a great job they're doing supporting their youngsters. Did you see the, the uh, memo that the uh, AOE came out with uh, uh, middle of last week, end of the month? Um, about identifying, you know, about continuity, about just that continuity of learning and identifying the critical proficiencies and working on, um, you know, looking at what really is the key things to be focusing on, looking at reinforcement versus trying to, to, to push out new content. And in particular, there was a table that talked about how, you know, the, the different amounts of time that a, a, right. a kindergartner should be 30 minutes to 90 minutes max. Right, right. Five all of that yep. span versus you know a fifth grader should be 60 one hour to two hours and that hopefully we're we're, we're, we're balancing all that and it's all we're, we're not we are carl and we did we did send those out those time recommendations and um mary Ellen simmons and amy toth have done a great job identifying the specific proficiencies at each grade level um on which instructional will focus from now through the end of the year I think one of the new learnings for, for parents and for teachers and administrators alike is the notion that distance learning looks very, very different than learning under the schoolhouse roof. I know a couple of the early calls I had, parents said, well, you didn't send anywhere near enough work to keep them busy all day. Um, and we're not, that wasn't the intention of keeping them in front of a screen all day. So there's been a lot of learning, but yes, we did see that document and we did try and reflect it in um, what we're telling parents and teachers. Yeah, I thought that I, I thought that was was pretty interesting. And again, on the idea of trying to <laughs> narrow focus and narrow time. But um, okay, does anyone else have anything for uh, uh, Lindy and Bonnie? Okay, that means that the next thing is budget or distance learning report. I suppose since uh, Lindy and Bonnie need to be around for the distance learning as well, um, we might as well do budget so at least Tara can uh, move on to somewhere else. Sure. So did everyone see the uh, documents from Tara? Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Yes. The ones I send at like 5.30. <laughs> yes. Uh, you said that um, Lindy was going to update the, the reason for the change. Sure. Um, there was Bonnie and I just had a question and were able to catch Tara before she went into her six o'clock meeting about um, 
1100 on the version that was line item. Sorry, 1100 on the version that went out uh, yesterday. Uh, seems like it took a big jump. And what's in that line item is um, a shared interventionist between Stockbridge and Chelsea. And we had actually also put another um, interventionist who we share with the SU, Amy Toff, in there. And really she was in, uh, she's already in the general salaries. So it created a little bit of a savings there. Is that the right explanation, Tara? It was what, 320? Yes, yeah, 320 right. contracted services was. Oh, there it is. Yeah. There was the Thank two interventionist yeah. positions, yeah. and then in the 1100 101, the local interventionist salary was also included. So we had double deducted or double added, whatever word you want to use, that salary. So we were able to back that out, which resulted in a reduction in your budget. And then also um, the changes that Bonnie had requested after a discussion, I believe it was with you, Amy. Yes, we well. changed the board clerk fee to $250, a board clerk salary, a treasurer salary to $750, and then added the treasurer postage back in for $500 that somehow had gotten dropped. And then I adjusted the FICA for both Great. of those positions. Okay. Well, just so the rest of the board knows, I did go through this and spoke with Bonnie, um, who clarified a number of questions I had. Um, I won't pain you guys with those. Um, she answered my questions quite well, and I feel quite satisfied. Um, I do have a question about our, our revenue and our farm to school grant. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah, well, I'm just wondering, I mean, that's not going to be in this, but it's not going to be in our revenue in this budget, is it? That's a, that's a terror question. It is not in here, Amy, no. Right, okay. Um, you don't budget for food service, and that's going directly into food service revenue. Okay. So, so that's then, not included in your local revenue. Okay. So there is, um, but there's a stipend for farm to school on um, coordinator that is in our budget. No, that position is part of the grant funding. We didn't change any of the structure of what is being moved over from the general fund to food service. We talked about that early on, but we haven't made any of those moves. I'm sorry. That whole, grant, that whole farm to school grant is um, is still up in the air. Obviously, okay. so there's no so. Um, okay. A lot of unresolved questions, Amy. Uh, both with sorry. ourselves and with other schools who have received those grants on just exactly um, how we're going to proceed with using them. Much of what we propose to do with our grant we wouldn't be able to do until next spring. Okay. Because it heavily involved youngsters in planting, harvesting, stuff like that. And we're going to miss that window this year. Okay. I just saw a line item for a stipend for farm to school coordinator in the budget. So I was wondering, I just, oh. was, well, it's under, um, I, I, correct me if I'm, I could be completely wrong. I, I Maybe I'm assuming under 1400 athletics and co-curricular, there's a 108 general salary. Yeah. It's only $790, but I, I just was kind of wondering. I know, saw that and I was wondering where the other side of it was. No, that's just um, what is contractually obligated if people were to run clubs after school. That has nothing to do with farm to school. That's there is, there is in the contract. right there is in the contract stipends for people who run after school clubs and we put i think two in there thinking that we might be able to do some this year okay the after school clubs thank right. you that's not farm to school coordinator okay um on the so, revenue page tara the um the uh e-rate is shown 
as uh, we had budgeted 3,000 revenue for me rate in uh, 2019, the actual show nothing. We say we budgeted uh, 1632 for 2020. And when you look at the expenditure report you sent out this week, it shows that we collect, collected none of that. And it doesn't show that it's encumbered or that we expect to collect any of that. Should we really be putting in these revenue figures that are not showing up? I mean, is, it, is, is that being done? At one point in time, I know we had a consultant doing E-rate for the whole SU. Um, at another time, I think it was done by by uh, the business manager, but I'm not sure where that where that paperwork and the filing window and all that gets handled these days. You. <laughs> I don't know anything about E-rate. That's been Ray. Uh, Carl, can I uh, speak to that? Sure. Thanks, Ray. Right. So um, I can tell you for next year, there are no projects planned uh, for Rochester or Stockbridge. And thinking back, my predecessor would have done those for this year. I don't think there was anything for Rochester or Stockbridge, to be honest, but I'd have to look to be sure. It certainly wasn't anything big. Okay. You know, we're building a, a uh, room uh, and components to kind of... Uh, more orderly uh, put together, at least that's how the money was spent, to put together, um, uh, organize uh, some of the electronics um, but in, there's, in, uh, in Rochester. There's no, yeah, the E-rate, I mean, the way the E-rate program works is you do, there's, there's the, the federal government says, we'll, we'll qualify these projects, which are usually, you know, your ISP costs and your phone costs and networking, and they've moved now to wireless equipment is a big focus. But the idea is you do this project, you spend a bunch of money, and then you get the percentage that's kind of equal to your, it's a little bit modified, but it's equal to your your um, free and reduced lunch percentage back of that project. Right. So the, 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 the idea, Bruce, that there might have been some par project that, um, what's his name, uh, Mark thought that we were going to get um, 1600 back from, the question is, you know, we're, we're, we, we've treated this as now like $6,000 worth of revenue over the last three budget cycles that it doesn't seem like we've, we've ever collected on. So it kind of seems like either we've got some sort of revenue artifact that we should be looked at and made accurate, or we should be doing the submission to get that money back from that wiring project that was put together because we were supposed to have gotten $1,600 back this year on the early expenditure report. Yeah. I, I don't know that we didn't. I, and Mark's not hard to find. So okay. we can follow up on that because if we're supposed to get sixteen hundred dollars, and I'm watching Bonnie and Lindy scrape two hundred dollars out of this 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 fund and one hundred dollars out of that fund, and making kids only color with twelve color, you know, twelve crayon packs instead of the full sixty four, you know, not getting the 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 the, the two thousand bucks kind of matters to me. So so, may I, sure. Carl? Yeah. Well, uh, can't speak until I'm recognized, right? Um, I, I believe that the only project that um, went forward and there and then got reimbursed this year was something in a different district within the SU. There at this point, I don't think there's any reimbursement for phone and internet. It, that did used to be the case, but over the last five years, they've stepped that down in twenty percent. And I believe, you know, we're going into the sixth year, so next year there wouldn't be any. It's, it's Cynthia Powers, a grants coordinator, who did the Category 1 stuff. That's the phone and internet. In my position, I had worked on the Category 2 stuff, which is, like you're talking about, wireless access points, switches, and things like that. So I think you're right, Carl. We could take it out if it's not an anticipated revenue any longer. Carl, you're muted if you're talking to us. <laughs> I was ranting still. I'm done. Um, <clears throat> can I get an idea from Lindy and Bonnie? Obviously, you said you wanted to come back with a, a zero growth budget. Um, what 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 went by the wayside? Um. The big things, Ethan, are on that summary sheet we set with the with the budget. Oh, I didn't see that. Okay. So, yeah, that's, 
memo type sheet that just has increases and reductions? It came with the um, draft that was sent Monday. Oh, the first yeah, one. Not, okay. Yeah, right. not the 5.30 or whatever time I called Tara. <laughs> so um, basically, Basically, what we did, Ethan, is we, we level funded, we started out by level funding everything that we could. And then we um, we removed some things, uh, which are, did you find the little document? Yes. Okay. So we removed the things that are listed there. Probably the biggest savings is in a personnel change. We're going to um, take advantage of the fact that the that the uh, counselor at Stockbridge uh, received a full-time offer at another district. And so the counselor at Rochester, which was full-time at Rochester, will be shared with Stockbridge. So we're doing the same thing with the, with the counselor's position that you recall we did a couple of years ago with the music position. That's oh, okay. probably the biggest savings. Uh, but we did level fund pretty much everything. We did take out funding for uh, Kewaden, Holbert, um, funding for the Best Institute, which is a professional development opportunity that uh, teachers have. That we feel we, we, we probably can fund through a grant source. So it's though it's coming out of the budget, it's not a, not a total loss. Mm -hmm. And Lindy, is there anything else you think we should mention? Well, I had a question about underneath that. It says if we don't replace part-time custodial, our Rochester savings would be nineteen thousand. Um, are we losing uh, custodial, or uh, that would be something for executive session, Amy, that I'll bring up. Okay. But it uh, is it, that is currently in the budget right now. This correct. is just an, an if. Okay. In the current budget is full fuel funding for the high school building. Uh, yes, at 50, 55. Yes, at, at turning the temperature down again. Okay. And did we keep numbers for um, oil usage? And I know this is an old question, um, but I just don't remember the answer. Um, do we have any um, a breakup between the high school and the elementary school as far as heat? Uh, oil use we we do Ethan I don't have them with me tonight but but they are broken out under separate accounts okay I initially was thinking about um, tapping that line item down a bit believing that the cost of fuel is going to drop but then we decided to leave it at its current level until we got a better handle on on everything related to this 19 piece yeah. Um, I don't think so. I'm sure there'll be some pushback about key waiting and some of those trips that we took out. Uh, we did leave winter wellness in. Who? I think there were two feelings. Um, we just don't know that that'll ever again be a possibility. Quite frankly. Um, what will winter wellness or key waiting? He weighed in uh, a week over with, you know, away with a lot of other kids from a lot of other places while a great learning experience. I just don't see that in our new normal <laughs> anytime soon. Um, and it, I don't know. Is there anything else around that? Bonnie, um, it's a great experience. And I know kids will be bummed by it, but I just, I think we're going to be lucky to get everybody back in a building. Well, exactly. I think yeah. Our goal is to get kids back in the building, which I think they'll be happy enough. Right. right. And the other, oh, the other, the other thing I, I, the other thing I would say, um, is that even without the COVID nineteen piece, there were not a lot, but there was an increasing uh, number of parents who were sort of questioning the week away, the four nights overnight, the supervision, the all those kinds of things. So I think there's two things that were operating for Lindy and I when we, when number one, we, we realized that we wanted to try and bring in a, a budget as close to zero as we could, because at the time we were finalizing this, we were hearing uh, some of the financial implications for next year. So that was just a, a, a bigger impetus for us to do that. Um, and I agree with Lindy. I don't think by next year we're going to be bringing large groups of kids together um, for field trip activities. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, Bruce, and maybe there's a question for you. Uh, there was talk back when about making up the $90 million deficit that uh, they were going to attack the, you know, the legislature might attack every budget at 10%. You know, taking 10% back. Um, I have no idea if that's even in the conversation anymore. Should we be preparing for um, even less money available? You're muted, Bruce. I don't think you have any way in preparing for that okay. uh, at this point. Uh, not to say, I mean, I think the AOE and, and the state are looking for a second funding of, of CARES, CARES Act money. The first funding of CARES Act money, which is $31 million, is coming to the districts in the form of Title I funding and probably Perkins funding. Uh, Sorry, they're hoping you, that they will get a second shot of of CARES, CARES Act money that might help to replenish the Ed Fund. And if that happens, of course, we don't know how much it's gonna be. Uh, if that happens, um, there wouldn't be any reason to raid, you know, past budgets and, and try to collect some of that there. Um, but this is all real fluid and, and nobody really knows. Uh, it's not set anywhere. It's gonna outrage a lot of people if they do that. Um, you know, everything's okay until you start messing around with my funds, you know, and my budgets. But uh, I don't think there are any, they've, it's been talked about, Ethan, just like I told you, but I don't think there's anything, any movement in that. Gotcha. So. The last thing I had heard was that they were talking about maybe uh, clawing back um, the budgets that got passed with increases, calling, clawing back like a, a quarter to a third to a half of the, the those increases those increases that those other towns um, put in, so not as to make you know haves and have nots the people that voted before the world change and the people that are trying to pick up the world's pieces. Yeah, the average amount of money that passed in those budgets that did pass was uh, four four percent above the twenty twenty budgets. So. I think just another thing to think about, not that it directly impacts our budget, but Wendy and I both sit on a couple of emergency management uh, groups that also have uh, members of select boards um, in those groups. And, you know, a budget can be passed, um, but whether or not the, 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 the town is able to collect adequate property taxes to meet that budget is the next question. So, yep. Yep. um, not necessarily, I think it's wise for those, those towns are struggling with if they think they're going to be able to collect the funding to meet those expenditures that were identified in those approved budgets. Do you, do you, Lindy Bonnie, um, have a sort of secret sheet somewhere where if you knew you had to suddenly, you know, we were suddenly 500,000, 200,000 short, are you prepared for that? I, um, not without losing more people. We well, no, that's what I'm saying. We've, I mean, certainly, we've certainly talked about it, Ethan. And Lindy, uh, correct me or if you think I'm wrong or if you want to say something differently. I think this budget represents about what we can do without some sort of restructuring. Yeah. No, I whatever, whatever restructuring means. No, I, I understand that restructuring is the next step. Um, uh, it's 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 um, it's just just that you're thinking about it is is reassuring yeah we, um go, go ahead thinking Lynn. about it yes i five hundred thousand, for instance if that were the big number i i don't know what we would do a secret yeah. sheet or not i'm not sure where that would come uh, Two hundred thousand, even i don't know about you bonnie but that would be a stretch yeah i mean we would have to talk deeply with Tara and neither one of us feel comfortable in doing this and changing how much we're funding HRAs for next year and um, things of that. We, I don't know how we open a building. You're now talking custodians and lunch people and well, a lot I, of different things. I, I think, 
I mean, the reality is if it, we may be forced to make a decision about buildings. If yeah, and I'm uh, sure, uh, I think we're in the crisis. Yeah. I think we're in the crisis we were trying to avoid. Um, yeah, I just, you know, as we say, everything's saying we don't know anything about the future here. Right. We don't know if kids are even coming back to the buildings in September. Um, right. So I, I just that we're aware of the possibilities and that we as a board are aware that it may mean very dramatic changes very suddenly as we've already gone through. Yeah, and I, I, I think as Lindy said, uh, if the numbers actually get, you know, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, um, we are really talking about uh, not line item decisions, but yep. structural decisions. Yep. Uh, transportation, yep. for example, it's not required in the state of Vermont. Yep. I don't know if we had to cut three or $400,000 out of a budget, how we could do it and still offer transportation, still be structured the way we are. So um, could we do it? Yes. It would just depend on what, uh, you know, our communities would be willing to accept what what guidance and maybe this is something just for down the road um, for another meeting but what guidance or vision would you need from us i think probably lindy uh, again chime in here i think probably what we would have to do at that point is to take the facts take what we know and right now there's so many unknowns yep. i think we would i think we would have to take the facts that we know we would have to keep at the center of our decision making that our primary goal is the education of youngsters. Mm -hmm. We have to put politics aside, and we yep. have to say this is what um, our professional expertise and judgment um, has us recommending to the board, and then get a sense from the board: is it tolerable what we've offered? Uh, get community input. Um, certainly, it would be schools looking very differently mm -hmm. i have um, i was just going to say and, and i'm naive and i continue to be this way even at my age and i try to make lemonade out of lemons but I'm not so naive <laughs> <laughs> was that a compliment or not I yes. know, take it whatever way you want you know <laughs> way, so. um i i think that this I hope that it doesn't um, narrow down to what you're saying, Bonnie, or personnel, but it also might be an opportune time to say, okay, we got to have one building or we got to have, you know, kindergarten through second in one building and three through six in another building or everybody at the high school. I mean, high school, I, I'm not sure. But it might be a time that quiets the voices that um, have been screaming about this because this is a crisis and well, everyone is going to have to realize that. Well, as Bunny says, we'll see. I just, I, I, I just, you know, it's certainly, it's certainly something I've been hearing going to these full board meetings. It's certainly something that just reading the memos from the school board association and, and the AOE, I mean, the, just the amount of uncertainty we're going into for next school year is enormous. It's just yeah. enormous to me, and that's what I keep hearing. Um, and I just think we're better to, to, you know, be thinking about it um, and I, be contemplating it. Yeah, I think you're right, Ethan. I think there's a lot of uncertainty, but I also think it's an opportunity. I don't want any community or either community, I should say, to feel slighted that they weren't part of the process, but I think it pushes us to the conversation about what's best for kids educationally. Yes. And I think we have to understand that that means it could look very different in a lot of different ways. There's still a lot of possibilities out there. We just don't, that's where that uncertainty piece kicks in. But um, we need to understand that kids are probably not gonna be transitioning to specials classes. So what does that mean? Is that an opportunity for us to make a small adjustment now that potentially provides us great savings in the long run and maybe makes a decision at least for a couple of years until we can get out of this? I don't know. Um, and that it's all moving forward. Like it may not be ideal, but I think it's all moving forward and an opportunity for us to make some good kid 
kid success stories instead of kid consequences based on our decision. Yeah, and I'm, I think I'm sorry, I, 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 I realized thing, too, Bonnie, hold on a sec. I realize I have kind of derailed our, our budget discussion here. So I, 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 being mindful of timekeeping, I don't want to be too speculative. Um, do we need to approve this budget tonight? Is that our goal, Carl? Carl? I'm sorry. Um, is that our goal to approve this budget tonight? It is not. It is not uh, uh, listed as an a action item. It still has, you know, we, we're still finding issues with it uh, now. And I'm still hoping, and my last question to Tara was going to be, when do we get our audited numbers? Because I really think one of the things we talked about all along that is going to improve the community's trust and faith in, in our budget is being able to say, in 2019, here's what the independent auditors of the actual CPAs the, the, the firm say, here's what we spent. Here's where the money went. For sure, he's not just, you know, we the think oh, or this place close. So, so here's really where we're at. The first draft of the long reports from the audit were issued. We found lots of issues and we sent them back to the auditors. So now we're waiting for a second draft of the final long reports. One of the major issues is they didn't have your special revenue funds allocated appropriately in the long reports, which we didn't see until we got the very first draft of the long reports, because none of that information is included in the short reports. Okay, and so so the, Amy had straightened all these things out a month or two ago but we just didn't see that they didn't get the straight information until we saw the long report yesterday or, or the day before last week. Yes, yeah, so when we got the long reports, we went through them and identified that these are still the areas of concern that we have. It doesn't look like they're identified correctly. The balances don't match what the bank statements say. So we sent it back to the auditors. And when do we expect to get it back? Because- I would to hope within the next week to 10 days, um, I got, they're also dealing with the same issues that we're dealing with, with staff shortages. So that would be my, my hope and my desire. Because if we, if we got it back in, in a week, so we get it back next Tuesday, the 13th, we maybe warn something for say the 14th or 15th as the emergency meeting to approve this budget that now has all the proper numbers and audited figures in it. Um, and then we warn the meeting. So that means we're now warning if we're going to warn something, we have to warn it for mid June, mid June, you know, and and then figure out how to put together an Australian ballot. You know, we don't have any. You know, we, we have to just warn it for the minimum thirty days almost, and just figure out how to in two towns that have never done an Australian ballot, how to do one on the fly. So I mean, it's 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 something to think about, but I I don't know. I, I still. Carl, you're basically saying if we if we if we don't have those audited numbers by next Tuesday, we're pushing it out probably even another month or something like that. I I, I would think, or we're saying we're not going to put in audited numbers for the fourth year in a row, mm -hmm. and just get you know get get uh, um, Rob and and uh, and uh, the um, what's her name just climbing up our our, our 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 you know just you know being upset with us for not having audited numbers, even though we've spent $10,000 on audits in the last couple of years. It's what, $2,500 a pop for us, I think. Well, you you were at the full board meeting where we're putting out the offer for yeah. you know, new accountants. Yes, yes, but we still have to. Yeah, deal with what we have. With, with these, and it really, I mean, for my, 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 my sense is the, 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 politic, the politics of having audited numbers would really do a long, you know, do a do go a long way towards making us not look uh, as unprepared. Um, so, do we have further budget discussion? Only so my question. My question is, even if I get the whole audited numbers completely, but should we be exploring what it's going to take to make an Australian vote happen? So, if all of a sudden we're ready to approve this or present it for approval next week at an emergency meeting. Do we need to start reaching out to people to figure out how to make that happen now instead of 
waiting until the budget is ready. Does that make well, sense? I, that makes perfect sense. My question for Tara though is, um, can she put audited numbers into a budget that fast? No. Right. That's what I thought. Not between today and Tuesday or whenever I get the final report because I am booked solid for the next three days. Right, and even once you get it, it's going to take you some time to get it in there. Is that correct? Yeah, even once I get the second draft, I need to go through it and Rose needs to go through it to make sure that it's still accurate. So then when do you think, in all reasonability, um, you could have you 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 could have us the, the 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 document we need to put into a warning. Do you think you you think you could do it by the you know, the end of the month? Could we be could we be pushing for a, a June twenty eighth or something like that? I think if all of the information comes back, Carl, that's an absolute reality. But as far as giving you a specific date, I can't do that. I I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I can't answer questions. I don't know. Right, and that's and telling us you don't know is 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 fine. I would and I would prefer that rather than you saying, "Yeah, probably." I'll I feel comfortable saying that. But Carl, don't forget, we would be voting tonight on a budget without any um, final accounting. Right. No, we'd be voting. Had everything voting. normally. We would have our meeting tonight, correct? Or yes. Was, yeah. So I mean, the fact is, we we were going to go ahead without that. So maybe we should just go ahead without it. If, if it, it all depends on what our priority is. Is our priority to get a budget in front of people as fast as possible, or is our priority to get an accurate budget in front of people? I think your priority is to get a budget. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. And maybe you, maybe you set a date at late June and work backwards about what you have to have and when you have to have it. I mean, I, I think at this point, yeah, a budget, I, I agree with you, Bruce, I think a budget rather than, I mean, clearly this process of accounting has been going on and on and on and on. And I think, you know, from Tara, she can't guarantee us anything. So we have to go on what we have. Um, and I, and think, I think you should move ahead. And uh, after speaking with uh, Bonnie, she, I, I believe these numbers, uh, they had a lot more uh, information, though they're not a, the audited numbers, they are a lot more accurate than they were before. And I don't know if there's Closer. a way to present that as, as it is, you know, we're... A mostly audited budget, yeah. Right. <laughs> Tara, Tara has certainly, Tara has certainly straightened out a lot of things there are there we are just miles beyond where we were a couple of years ago but i do i i do hear the frustration and feel a bit myself about you know why we can't get audited numbers after three years i can i can understand how the communities feel that way yet there's nothing tara can do anything yep. about that but what she's doing so uh yeah. Right. I, don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a step that combines both. If you could set it later in June, and if Tara has good audit and numbers by then, great. If not, we just move forward like we have. Well, you know, if we if we go if we do that, then where the the where the place we've kicked the can to is, do we have audited numbers to drop into a document um, by whenever the document needs to go to Spalding Press mm -hmm. to stickered and mailed? You know, we we right. we, we we count back. From that timeline, we also need to 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 look at, you know, uh, besides how to conduct a, 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 an audit, we also probably would need to reach out to Spalding and find out, you know, under their circumstances. I, I believe, you know, they didn't have a work crew of more than five anyway, so I believe they could theoretically be back to work. But I mean, that's still up to them as a as a company whether they want to. Correct. So I don't even know if we could get a booklet printed, and I, I don't but know no. if the state department if the state department. Uh, relax the rules so we could just publish online because that would be the simplest because then you could just make a, a PDF and we can pop it up on a website, you know, lickety split. But I don't know if we still have to send a paper copy. Bruce, do you know if that got changed? I don't know about the paper copy. No, I don't know that. But I'm going to get the guidance yet tomorrow and I'll send it out to all of you when I see it. Thank you. I know the information I get in Brandon is not the full budget. 
mailed to me. I get what the increase is, what the major changes are, and what's going on in the schools. Bonnie, you can probably correct me if I'm wrong. And then I also know in Bristol, Vermont, all they get is a postcard that basically just explains some of the changes, what that means for your taxes, and where you can find the actual budget online. Or you can call and ask for a copy. Yeah, I don't know if that now requires, uh, it, it used to require voter approval to do that. We don't send out anywhere near the number of school reports we used to send out. Um, but without voter, unless the legislature has taken some action in the last couple of years. Um, but with voter approval, you don't have to send those out anymore. You can just send a, a, a postcard or you can just have it emailed to you. Right. And like I said, I don't know if that was one of the things that got relaxed in, in some of the changes around everything going virtual or not. Yeah, I don't, I don't I know. Haven't, I haven't seen anything as far as a statue adjustment, Carl, as to what we're required to send out to voters prior to the annual meeting. I haven't seen anything of that in the statute. Okay. Um, yeah, then the last thing, I mean, so we're, we're, we're debating whether we think um, the, the certainty of having a budget that's, that's pretty much where our budget was last year, being able to say, yeah, there's a little bit of an increase, but that's because it changes in the CLA and changes in, uh, pupil count, you know, we're, 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 we're dollar for dollar pretty much where we were, right? Cause that's where this budget is, correct? Yeah, it's about 18, I don't know, 18 something, 18,000, uh, above last, above last year's. No, Bonnie, the revised one is 2000 below last year. Oh, all right. That's even better. So we could put that, we could put that budget out. Um, and you know, that, that would give people certainty that they knew where they, they, they would have a better idea of where their taxes were. Um, the other, the other thing is, you know, I've heard at least from a couple of people that, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you're not trying to make us come somewhere and vote, you know, that we, that, you know, is it, are, you know, is it responsible to put out a budget when we don't know what's going on? We don't even know what schools are going to be like next year. So I think we should think about our messaging on that because I can see, I see both sides. I see the, the value of saying we're being patient. The state's going to let us level fund and level spend. If we hear that decision, hopefully by the end of this week, um, you know, Stay tuned, folks. We're, you know, stay tuned, shelter in place versus we're going to formally pass a budget that's $2,000 less than that last year's. I, I would agree with Bruce. I think we're in a lot better position if we have a budget approved <clears throat> going forward as soon as possible. I'd rather not deal with 87%. I mean, I, I don't know if that's probably unrealistic at this time that we're not going to go past the end of June deadline, but I, I just feel that we want a budget. And then we can hang on to that, and then we deal with all the adjustments that come one way or the other. I agree. I'm just trying to recommend it to all of you that you at least set a date for uh, something yep. before June 30th. That's all. Yep. It can be the day before that or the last day of the month. I don't know, but yeah, I think I agree. I think I think we want control of our budget, and it's going to be a lot easier if we get it done before the deadline. Sounds like anyway. Forget, you know, don't worry about audit. We've got better funding. You know, we're going to take some flack for that. Hey, we're getting a budget done in crisis time. So I think that's really good. And we're being very responsible by bringing in, in zero growth. So I think that's very good. Well, it's 3%, it'll be 3% tax increase. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's 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 cheaper. But that's I mean, still better than even though it was. Yeah, no, it, it it certainly is. It's just we have to be careful about how we how we message it. But I do you agree, Carl, that we should just get one? We should get a budget out there. Um, I think so. I want to make sure. I want to. I'd like us to figure out the logistics about the printing, the logistics about the uh, Australian ballot, because I don't know. You know, I don't know how we can have a, a floor vote. No, we can't. Oh, so, so, you know, so I mean. Yeah, well, I was looking at the, the, the Tumbridge idea of standing in the field. I'm like, we can't do that. <laughs> um, so, but but let 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 let's look into the logistics and let's let's you How know do we, we do that. Who 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 does that tell me for Lindy or is that for us? I will talk to the Secretary of State. Um, Bruce knows how to do Australian ballots because he does them somewhere else in the SU. Well, we Rochester used to. 
Yeah. Yeah. There always was a strong ballot until we joined uh, our side. So we're pretty familiar with it. Okay. Okay. So I think we need to. I think we need to loop the town clerks in. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the that we've all talked about. Uh, the superintendents and the secretary of education. We we all talked about this that we have to get the town clerks on on working with us on this because if they're going to put up a lot of roadblocks because they're scared to death that to do any of this. Um, we're just going to have more trouble. Uh, yeah. We need to get them working with us. Could it, could it, could it be at our schools? Does it have to be at the town office? Do votes have to be by legislation at the town office, or could we do it at our school where there's more space? Well, that's what um, that's what uh, South Burlington's doing in three different places. Mm -hmm. uh, Couldn't we do some type of card that people pre-fill out and then? They don't get out of their car. They're just right. Right. Great idea. Right. Great idea. Why don't you, rather than us trying to invent the ways to do this, you seems like you got resources at the superintendent's uh, level yeah. about how yeah, yeah. We're doing this. So, can you give us a proposal and say, "Hey, to do this, we're going to need to do this to get it printed. We're going to need to do that to get the vote done." We've talked to your town clerks. They like the idea or they hate the idea, and 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 and, and circle back to us with with how to get this done. Okay. We, do we want to set a date tonight? I'm looking at the calendar. Uh, I think we should wait till we hear from the town clerks what their, what, what, what their thoughts are. I know uh, for speaking with Lori, she and I talk three times a week right now. It wouldn't take a lot to get feedback. Like it could be a short turnaround, I think is what I'm saying. Right. I think we can, I think we can let's get some information and try to have a special meeting at the end of the week or, or next Monday or something. Yeah. We can, we can go back and say, as as we're moving forward with this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't want us. I don't, I don't want us to wait till, till, till uh, the end of the month or whatever to, to, to do this. Yeah. I think if we're going to, if we're going to consider getting this done, we need to move on it. You know, number one with the expectation that we can do this as opposed to let's see, and we'll figure it out and we'll kind of lackadaisical it till we can't. Um, the, um, other, the other question we need answered is about the, the, the report. Um, does it need to be mailed? Can Spalding do that for us? Is that something we should take care of, or is that a Lindy and Bonnie? I don't just don't remember how we assigned that before, because I'm certainly willing to call Spalding. I, you know, I have some relationship with them, and see. Right, you've already started a good, good part of. You've already started a good part of that report as well. Starts. Yes, yeah, so we just have to fit in. We have to fit in a lot of details, um, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're. We, if we had to, we could put it up in you know in a week or something like that, or two weeks if we had to. Right. If Let's, I knew crunch time, we could totally put it together fast. But I just we just need to know: Are we printing it out? Are we putting it online? What are our requirements? Because I think the minimal requirement people are going to understand that. If they have to go somewhere online, they're pretty used to that. Um, so what's going to make this easy for us too? Right. Well, the big question is again: We haven't. You know, we haven't uh, uh, put it to to our voters to change the, the way we distribute the information. So we got so to do it the way we okay. we have to do it the way we did. However, you know, like they said, we got to, we did that vote at our last regular meeting um, to produce that specific motion that Dina wrote us to get the ability to do the one year Australian ballot. And you know, I'm curious if the State Department has has similar guidance of not you know needing to to to, to get everything printed and mailed. Can we can that be relaxed for one year? So, um, sorry. Can we somebody remind me off the top of their head if they can? What's uh, it's thirty days, right? Is that, that is thirty days before the meeting? We have to send out a bulletin. No, the warning. The warning, goes, the warning goes thirty days. The 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 people are supposed to have the book in their hand ten days before. I think ten days yeah. before. So if we're looking, That's correct. Ten days. Yeah. So if, if we if we looked at let's just ballpark look at the last week of June before the 29th. Um, and let's say we put a meeting on the 23rd. So that we're looking at the first, the second week of June, we would need it. The first or second week of June, we need to go to a printer. Is right. That reasonable? reasonable. Yeah, probably the first week of June because we'd have to assume, you know, the printers are not going to be working full speed and, yep. you know, the post safety process. I will I will get an email out tonight to uh, Spalding to see if they think that's a feasible thing that they could do 
okay. in the first week of June. And and what are our numbers again for copies? Does anybody have that number off the top of their head? It was about a thousand. It's thousand. less than a thousand, but okay. the ballpark. Ballpark. that's great. That's all I need is ballpark. Good. Thank you. I think this is really useful and good for our teachers and good for our staff to have to have this done or pushed put forward. I also think we need to think about like a Q&A session or some type of opportunity for community members to be able to ask questions or get clarifications around the budget because without that school, you know, that floor meeting that kind of takes that opportunity away from people. Yep. Uh, right. I'm not sure how there we There has to be that. an informational meeting if you're going to put an Australian ballot together. That okay. could probably be, do on, be done on a webinar, I would think. Okay. Uh, where, you know, some well, yeah, know that. Yeah, because because having everyone to get it get together for for an informational meeting kind of defeats the point of, of, of distancing to an Australian ballot. Right. But I yeah. think you do it. Uh, Ray tells me this will take up to 150 people on on one of these calls. Well, they, uh, how about if you? I mean, is it ridiculous to ask people to schedule <laughs> to literally let out a, a day and within a time? You know, we have people scheduled questions that they could come in one and one as opposed to trying to do a mass meeting on one of these things, which I think would be chaos. Um, Ray? Right. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think you would have enough time that using a Google form to collect questions in advance and then whittle those down to, you know, the duplicates and then produce, you know, have a meeting where you answer the questions. Okay. You know, the, the largest meeting we've been successful at is, uh, I would say, 60, give or take. The product can do 250. I've heard from colleagues successfully doing 175. You know, if you do it with teachers who have a lot of practice with this, I think that could happen. If you get people from the public, it's it's hard when they're on the phone, getting them muted and unmuted, things like that. But it makes sense to have question have everybody have a period of time that they can submit questions to we go through the questions and then have a meeting where people can essentially just listen possibly with one contact person that could maybe take by phone any additional questions and then put it forth to, to the um you know to the uh, or the board at the time i mean you got to think there's there's ways that they do this in massive you know, radio stations and, and all these, they, they take massive calls and, and they filter them first before they are able to, mm -hmm. then people can ask questions. The, the sure. texting feature of this program too could be useful for questions as well. It certainly has worked in the SU meetings, right. follow-ups or something like that. Okay. Well, um, I also think so you can, with your, especially if you can um, continue on with that drive of, of a very um, detailed, or as detailed as we can now, um, you know, uh, uh, a budget book that kind of answers a lot of questions in yes. it just to start with that will be very helpful. Okay. Okay, I guess I have to really get to work on it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Thanks. Well, that's, that's the other reason why I want to set this forward because I just, I've been sort of, you know, punting it and punting it and punting it because who knew, you know, it was August, September. Um, but I, I feel much better. Just let's get this done. So what do we want to do with the actual budget tonight? Do we want to get this information uh, regarding how we can go forward with a, a, a meeting and a vote uh, or a vote and then at that time approve yeah. the budget or do I, are we looking to approve it tonight? No, I don't want to approve it tonight. We still need to correct. Uh, we need to take the E-rate that we're ineligible for off the revenues. Um, we, uh, there was something else that was going to be adjusted that I've forgotten. I'll have to look at my notes. Well, so, so later this week, how much time do we think we need to finish this up? Um, let's wait. We, you know, let's get the information we need to get, you know, we oh, don't, sorry. if we decide to schedule a meeting for say Friday or Thursday, and we don't know yet from the state department, um, what we can oh, do. I see, got you. Yeah. We've got some questions to answer. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get those questions answered. I mean, we have the SU meeting and the negotiations meeting on Thursday. Um, so, you know, we're looking at beginning of next week, probably at the earliest. We don't know. Yep. Um, so I, I, I think let's let's try to keep maybe next Tuesday open. 
uh, just as, as, as a time frame, but. Um, hey, me, Carl, may I throw out another idea? Sure. Um, I'm wondering about the idea of, of using um, ORCA to do an informational meeting. Like I know we're, we need to keep social distancing, et cetera, but it seems like two or three people could keep far enough apart to actually anticipate some questions and do like an informational meeting that everyone can see? Would that get enough questions answered so that people might feel they had enough information and could we design a way to do some follow-up questions? Um, that's an interesting thought. We should, uh, you know, yeah. we, we should uh, see what we can find out about the, uh, about that as well. I mean, we could certainly, we could certainly just, uh, I mean, we could do a forum like this with all the board members answering some of the common questions and just record it and put that recording up on, you know, on YouTube and send everyone the YouTube link. So yeah, or it could yeah. just be an informational meeting. We could just take a stab at the, you know, 25 most frequently asked questions, get sure. that information out. That yeah. would probably answer the, the questions that a number of people would have. <laughs> true true yeah, um, i think the ways to get information out yeah yeah i i think uh i think we've we've gone way over time on our yes we have we're getting a little bit in the weeds can we can we just summarize what actions we're taking we're finding out how to hold an australian ballot election mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. i'm going to find out about printing and is there anything else we're we're trying to get done before we schedule this we're meeting? Finding out if we actually need to print in the first place, um, because if, if we could just put a PDF up online and send out a postcard saying how will we how will we know that and who do we ask? We ask we the ask State Department. The, 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 the That's part of the State Department. Department. Okay. Yeah. And is, and who's doing that? Is that Bruce? Bruce is Bruce is the one that's been having. He was saying he's been having all the conversations with superintendents about how to pull these things together and what they're doing okay. in South Burlington and so okay, good. So, so on. Bruce is Bruce, do you have your list? Yeah, I do. Good. Thank you. Then I'm I'm done. Okay. Um so Tara, uh you 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 I think can can uh, move on with your life. Thank I'm you. Cool. I'm improving payroll. It's great. <laughs> good for you. Keep an ear open and you're just you're busy working. That's fine. I just didn't want you to you to, to feel like you were hanging around. Uh, I would like to be part of your executive session because I know what it's about. Oh, okay. Don't okay, with that. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. So then let's move on to a replacement of teacher computers. Okay, that's Lindy and I. So at the last board meeting, um, you will recall that I mentioned the the fact that the Rochester teacher computers were were old. They're between nine and ten and eleven years old. As I've explored that a little bit, what I found out as we've moved to distance learning is that a couple of teachers are now using their own machines because the functionality of their older computers just just doesn't hold up. Um, anticipating that we may be looking at periods of time next year where we are going back to distance learning. Um, I'm feeling more of an urgency to replace the uh, old computers that teachers have at Rochester. Um, Lindy, we replaced the Stockbridge teacher computers, was it two years ago? Right, when I was first hired, we replaced Stockbridge's. Okay. Do you and, have, uh, did we budget for that? Well, no, we did not budget for that, but um, Tara is pretty Budget for which part, Carl? I'm sorry. Did we, I, I was asking for the for the X number of com, of uh, teacher computers in Rochester. I'm asking okay. if we have remaining funds in this year's budget to cover that expense, or if we budget it for it in next year's. No, we don't. We didn't budget for it in next year's. Tara's projecting a healthy surplus for this year. Um, I asked Ray to work up the the numbers for me, and I'm looking to spend for 15 teacher computers. We also need to upgrade and add a few Chromebooks. Um, I'm looking at about twenty-eight thousand dollars. Oof, that's that's a lot of uh, a, a lot of off-budget expense. My fear is, Carl. I don't want to. I don't want to overstate this, but my fear is. Uh, it, let me say it differently. 
we need to be in a more robust situation if we head into another period of extended distance learning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 I get that. It's just it's it's it's, you know, explaining to, to people how we got into a twenty eight thousand dollar hole in the first place where, you know, why, you know, th this is like the pretty much the worst time for deferred maintenance to bite us in the backside. Exactly. And that That's the message that now we get to add to our conversation, you know, and I mean, because we either have to be transparent about why we're doing it and saying, by the way, in the in, in either the at least in the budget book in some part of the narrative or somewhere, because we I, I do not want us to try to to try to slide by. Brand but hold on, Carl, uh, Carl, um, of actually Bruce, is there any chance that we could use some of the CARES money for this? Seems like that would be pretty appropriate. Perhaps, but um, we're not going to even know how much money that is for another week or so. So can we find well, out? But we don't know how much it is for us. It's all tied to your poverty uh, numbers and Title One funding. So yeah, I, I think so, but uh, I you can know get, it hasn't come back yet. So can we get an opinion on that? Because I know CARES fund CARES uh, is limited to what it can do, but if we could use that money for that, I would certainly I would far prefer saying we're taking very good years money. Yeah, yeah, very good use of that money. Um, you know, versus versus saying, yeah. By the way, <laughs> we got it. We, 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 we but, but I don't think it's yeah. By the way, I, I I don't think. And Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think necessarily that this would have come to light this way, except for the except for the crisis. Computers, eleven year old. I mean, five years old or six year old might be a thing, but saying that that that. The computers are older than some of the oldest kids in the building is a, is a hard sell to say that you've been doing regular technical maintenance. Yeah, and I we did have it on our list to start the replacement process, yes. Uh, yeah, no, we, we did. We did, and I understand why we're accelerating it. I'm not necessarily saying that, that I'm, I'm trying to squash the idea. I'm just saying that it's, a, it's not a positive message to be sending to our community after all the things that we've said about deferred maintenance and about problems and about stuff to, to do that. I think okay. I would far prefer if we could, if, if, if we are allowed to do it, I prefer Ethan's idea a lot saying, you know, we, we were starting to, we were starting a, a technology replacement and we're accelerating it because of distance learning and we're using our cares money to accelerate it. It's not coming. It's not another 28 grand of your property taxes. That's a whole different message to tell my, to tell our communities. Bonnie, is there some critical, like, are there three or four that are, like, absolutely need? I mean, I know that um, Hope's been having some problems with hers. Um, is there something, you know, that we can do that's smaller that we could do right away? Or is well, it all or none? We could, we could certainly start, uh, we could certainly start with the classroom teachers, but I would very quickly follow that statement with the fact that we have got to get anybody whom we expect to be connecting routinely with youngsters during the period of a shutdown, uh, on, a new computer. And I, I do know the message, Carl, I, I do know what you're saying, but the reality is um, there has been a lot of deferred maintenance at Rochester and we have to do some catching up. Um, we have brought in, you know, very low increased budgets. I understand why not more technology was in those budgets and it is coming back to roost right now. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I'm saying that, you know, we could do it in a couple of steps, but we need to be quite honest. We need to have new machines in people's hands, um, I think, by fall, because I think we are we are going to be moving into a period of time where we will, um, if we go back to school, experience continued shutdowns, hopefully for shorter periods of time. But uh, well, we're I, definitely I really want to support, if I can, Bruce, for a second, I really want to support what Bonnie's saying. I've taught online now consistently. I teach all day long. And without a computer that is working properly, you get cut off, you freeze, the, the instruction is inconsistent. If they don't have the appropriate technology, this is how they're going to be teaching, guys. This is going to be, yeah. I mean, we can plan for two or three weeks. So this is like having... As far as I'm concerned, it's like having direct instruction in the hands of a teacher who's in the classroom. They must have this technology. There is no choice. 
is there any place we can uh, I mean, is it, do we have any place we can get this money from? I, I would, that's the question I was going to ask, Ethan. Yeah. Where was Bonnie in her request hoping to get the money from? Surplus money? I was hoping to take it from this year's budget because Tara's projecting uh, a, about a $200,000 surplus in this year's budget. So yeah, we're, we're going to underexpend this year's budget by a significant amount of money. Um, and I was just hoping that uh, we could take it from there because I think rolling forward, uh, we're going to be reporting out in a minute. I think rolling forward, we're going to have several other expenses that are going to be competing for next year's budget. And we oh, don't want to defer the maintenance even further. Because that's, I mean, by putting it out more, you're deferring it even for another, longer. And Janie's point is our schools are the computers right now. That's basically yeah, no, that's, I'm, I'm not saying we should not do it. I'm no. saying that, that we should, uh, number one, explore the idea if we can use CARES funds for it or if we can find some other kind of grant funding opportunity because otherwise we're going to have that much more of an uphill climb as we, you know, I, I think we will need to tell the taxpayers that we had to, that, that, that we are spending, you know, this, this unexpected expense because if someone finds it, we've seen that happen where someone says, oh, what's this? And we say, oh, that was this thing. Well, why don't you tell us about that thing? So I think it's very important. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I agree. The kids have to be taught. And we can't just say, here's two soup cans and a string. Um, you know, but we need to, we need to, I, I really think we, we need to be aggressive to find some sort of alternate funding source before we just pull it out of general funds. Um, and finding out if the CARES money could be used for it we can pay for them with general funds and then backfill it from the CARES money when we when we record. The, the problem is the problem is this needs to happen now. And yeah, you're not going to. You're, 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 that's you're what I'm not saying. Gonna, we don't have from the CARES funds yet. So. Yeah, no, we saying, don't. Can we, can we use them for this? That's the question. But can we also get the money from somewhere else and then pay it back? That's what that's what I'm trying to say. We need yeah. we, we we should know that. Okay, but but I but it sounds like Bonnie wouldn't ask this if it didn't happen to happen now. If it needs to happen now, in other words, as soon as possible. You do have like, computers Let already. Have, and you know what? I don't think the community is going to be as negative as you as you're saying. I mean, I've watched these parents as I teach these kids. They understand if the technology is not good. They understand if their kid gets cut off from that computer. So I mm -hmm. think in the way the way um, Ethan phrased it, it's all how you present things. I mean, crap happens. It's how you handle it that counts. So if we present it in a certain way, we were planning on doing this anyway. This is a crisis. This is our future teaching. I'm not saying don't find the money someplace, but somehow, other than the general fund. But I am saying, um, if Bonnie wouldn't be saying this if we didn't need this. And I know personally, we need this. So Absolutely. however we do it, we have to do it. Carl, if I can chime in, I think your first point is absolutely crucial. I don't think a board should spend $50 without letting folks know that they're doing it. I think that's the first step down the wrong road. Um, so yes, this has to be very out there, very open. Um, and as you say, it's, it's, it's how you message it. A little bit of my concern is I'm guessing a number of schools are making these same decisions because I'm guessing there's a number of schools who haven't stayed right on their game with technology. So I'm a little concerned about getting equipment. Um, and then, of course, we need time to, you know, set it up and do all that stuff. I really would like to um, I really would like to have it in the hands of teachers by early summer so that we can do some professional development with it, because I think. Yeah. Our online learning could be ever so much better if we got newer equipment and training into our into our teachers' hands. Sure. Um, my own the sometimes when you spend when you spend grant money, um, it has to be spent by the grant. You can't like some of the some sped expenses if they get covered by a district. Stockbridge got burned for this when we paid a para. Um, to do some other things like to, to do some classroom cleaning that was that was not connected to direct uh, spread instruction. So we couldn't get that, we got all that money back because we took it from the wrong bucket in the first place. They, the, 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 the person at, at Montpelier very nicely explained how if you had filled the form out this way, 
you'd be fine. But you unfortunately pulled it out that way, so you're hosed. Yeah, um, about well, finding, out, finding out, you know, we if we're meeting in a week or so to approve a budget, we could improve. We could approve the uh, computer pr purchase at that time, and we could have some idea if we can if we can uh, fund it from grant money or fund it from CARES money. And if we don't know, then we don't know that. And we can we can address that. We can we can address that. I don't see, um, you know, like I said, I would really rather not have to listen to someone uh, from from my community talk about another, uh, you know, thirty thousand dollars going to the other school. So uh, that's the conversation I'd like to I'd like to avoid. And I'm trying to be very circumspect in, 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 in public session. Um, but, you know, so figuring out a way to support those teachers and support those kids, because that's our job, um, without without having to necessarily have another mea culpa is what I really am, am, am trying to avoid. Can I, I do understand that, Carl. Can I put, um, ask Tara a question? Tara, can you refresh my memory? Didn't we pull the money from um, the daycare sale out of the surplus for next year with the idea that we would put forward in front of the voters to officially put that money into a, a education fund. Yes. yes. So if that's the plan, can we not use that money from the general fund to buy these computers right now? I'm throwing that, that money out. Right now is sitting as part of your general fund surplus that rolls because it's not separated out. So the 70 ish thousand, I think it's like 72. Right something um is just sitting in the general fund so i'm wondering I did, and this is for the board your thoughts on using those funds to make this purchase since it would directly um, impact the education of students you're muted carl sorry i can see your lips but i can't hear your words <laughs> Yeah, I mean that would certainly, you know, that, that at least we'd be, be be saying it it came from from uh, you know a non a, a non general fund, um, but you know we we have to be careful because we've also sort of that's where the engineering study was theoretically maybe maybe being paid from if it wasn't being paid from from those theoretical leftover merger funds that we're still sorting, so we've I, I think we've we've got a lot of moving targets. I, I really think. Again, if we can try to sort this out this week and figure out a strategy to get these things bought and paid for, I agree, the teachers need them. An 11-year-old computer just makes me shake my head. No, I completely understand that. I'm just trying to say um, if next week is our deadline, and I think we should just say we're meeting on Tuesday and report out on what we have so we don't let this get away from us because it seems like the days kind of all blend together. I don't know about everybody else, but... Yeah. The only thing that keeps me consistent is we have admin meetings Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So I know when a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Is. But um, if we don't have an answer on the CARES money, and I don't have that much faith in our federal government to have an answer by then, uh, then or any government, quite frankly, uh, then I think we need to make a move. And maybe this is a way we can make a move by Tuesday to get that purchase done. I'd, I'm curious what other board members think, because ultimately it's your call. Okay, my opinion is that at our last board meeting, that daycare money had all been put into the budget, um, which was was at our the last budget draft, it had been. So that was pretty heartbreaking, but I came to terms with it because it was on, we didn't want to, it was what we had to do to without um, losing programming. I um, think that I would like to see the, teachers to, to update their technology. I do think we are accelerating something we were going to do already. And I think it would be appropriate for a good portion of it to be paid with, with the Dandelion Fund. Maybe we can do a little bit of both, maybe mostly pay it with the Dandelion Fund if other um, money doesn't come through and maybe it can partially be taken from last year's budget or this current year's budget. My 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 opinion is is um, I I, under, I hear you, Carl, and I understand your point, but I disagree. I think we I think this is absolutely crucial right now 
and we need to spend the money um, where we need it. And this is this is like the roof just caved in personally to me at the elementary school, and we had to spend the money to fix it. And Amy, we should have clarified in our report, we did take that money out and not roll it over in the surplus um, because we heard that and had the opportunity to go back and fix that when we had the whole tuition thing come up. And we never yeah. clarified that. That's why you only see that $100,000 surplus roll, roll over. Yeah. I, I, thank you uh, for clarifying that for this current budget um, that was in front of us now. Because it will have to go on the warning, but that's a different. Yes, I, I understand that, yes. Sorry. Janie, you're the fourth board member. I What's totally, that? no, I totally agree. They have to get it now. There is no choice. So do we vote on this? Ray had his hand up. I don't have the power to call on him, but I see his hand up in the grid view. So I don't know. If... Thanks, Lindy. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I just want to say that um, the dates were not in the inventory. This is not my inventory. I inherited it. But looking back, in terms of teacher devices, the youngest one I'm seeing is from 2014 and the oldest from 2011. So not necessarily 11 years old, but from 2011. But even the youngest at 2016 is older than it should be. 2014, excuse me. I, Six years I, old. I think I think our administration is asking us for a, bo a vote on this. I, I understand. I just wanted to be clear about that because the, no. the term 11 years old was used. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's you. not accurate. So the question is, is, is term on, the, on laptops for the, the SU, Ray? I'm sorry, Carl, what? What's the regular depreciation? What do we? What is our standard replacement cycle across the SU? Yep. So when I asked RHR about that, they said you tell us. So <laughs> laptops would be three years, desktops or other network equipment five years, but but nothing over five in terms of depreciation. So straight line, you know, five years generally. I I guess I agree with what Ethan said. It is kind of crisis. Like like something major just happened, like the roof just caved in, and we just have to spend the money. And especially considering we are expecting a surplus. Sure. It's not, now, it's not now, like we're going into deficit funding. Now, do we what? Do we uh, uh, make a motion? Well, wait, wait, wait. We need to figure out where we're getting the money from, because okay. at the one point in time, first we were saying that I I thought what Amy had thought was that Dandelion Acres was rolled over into there. And we could, uh, you know, we, we could say, well, you know, the, the, the Rochester funds from that got thrown into the general fund and we paid for computers for Rochester from the general fund. So if it's if it stays separate, how does it work on the warning or budget? If we say that we're going to take that take that money and we're going to use it and out of that money, we're going to pay we're going to pay for uh, uh, Rochester's uh, uh, replacement. So right now you would do absolutely nothing as far as the warning is concerned, because that's not a special revenue fund. But even when a special revenue fund is established, the board does not need the authority of the voters to spend the money because they've already set it up for what the reserve fund is for. And it's the board's authority to spend it once the reserve fund is established. So because the dandelion daycare money is just sitting in your general fund, you would just purchase the computers, you would code them under the appropriate expenditure line and it would show that you overspent your hardware by i believe nineteen thousand dollars because i think there was either eight or nine thousand left in there and the story to that when you present it to the town and you give an explanation to the town would be this is a result of our need due to sure COVID 19 having updated technology for our faculty and staff to use to teach our children would be the, the best case scenario. Now, if we get COVID money, what I would be doing, which is what I have to do all along and almost on a weekly basis, sometimes in the past two weeks, it's been three times a week, I have to submit a report of estimated additional expenditure as a result of COVID. I would include those costs in our additional expenditures due to COVID because it is a result of that that you're needing to do it now and can we show somewhere where that uh dandelion acres 
revenue ever went into our revenue stream so we could point out why yeah. it's in there? Yeah, I mean, it's just sitting it in your general fund. Separate. Yeah, I mean, it's not tracked in infinite visions. It is not tracked as a separate reserve fund because it's not a separate reserve fund. It is just part of that surplus that's rolling from the year of the sale, which I believe was last year. Right, because the vote never got done properly when the right. bill was sold to make it into a Rochester fund before the merger happened. Is that correct? That's that's what you remember yeah. too. Yes, because you as a board don't have the authority to create a reserve fund. So because it was done at a board meeting, it made the motion in the process invalid because it doesn't meet the requirements in order to set up a reserve fund. You have to put it on your warning and you have to put it in front of your voters. So what you could do as an option is if you know, we have 71,000 or 70,904 is the revenue for the pro the sale proceeds. What you could do is on your warning, you could request the voters to authorize you to create a general education reserve fund. The purpose of that fund would be for unbudgeted general education expenditures something along those lines, whatever your intent is for this fund. And if the purchase of the computers is only 28,000, you could roll the remaining of those proceeds into that reserve fund. Now, if we get enough COVID money for the ARSA district, we wouldn't even have to take that revenue stream. We would just be bringing that in as COVID-19 revenue, which would offset that expenditure. Okay. so. We 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 are we are legal and okay, and we won't be upsetting people that think that Rochester put that dandelion acres money away separately because that didn't happen. That was not right. the, the advice of two business managers ago or whichever one David was. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, was was wrong. So the sales the sales went properly into our general funds, and they've been kind of rolling as a surplus, and we could tap that down. And in your thinking. The way that you, at least the, the advice you've heard from the business managers association or whatever, is that, you know, the, the you're filling out a, rep a report of COVID related expenditures because this this CARES money is supposed to be for COVID, COVID related expenses. And you're pretty confident that, that by your putting it there, it makes it pretty eligible for getting reimbursement. Yes, that's my understanding of all of the, the meetings that I've sat through, all the legislative sessions that I've sat through including the one yesterday that I was involved in from the VSA, Vermont Superintendents Association, where Secretary French indicated that the CARES money was for additional COVID expenditures. Okay, then- Bruce, you're shaking your head. Did you not hear that? I heard it. I'm not oh, shaking okay. my head for any reason other than- Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't think exercise. That, it's exercise. I don't think that all of the replacements should be just the dandelion money. I think that we should take a portion from from the um uh uh, uh from the what I'm looking for with the money that we have at the end of this year because we we're because we're because we're going to replace them that was the plan we're just doing it in an accelerated fashion right right i'm just trying to i'm just trying to to to, to come up with to, to think about the narrative that that uh you know uh gets gets away from more rochester deferred maintenance because that's that's the uh the the, the sentiment right, well, uh, we're replacing them anyway we're planning on spending what oh, yeah. dollars to start replacing them anyway? So it sounds we're like accelerating it, and we're funding a portion of it, but not all of it, because we were planning on doing it anyway. Starkbridge Stark. got there to place last year, and our budget paid for it. Can so. can we can we move on? Yeah, um, I, was just, I, I do want to. Yeah, we, I think we, we need. I think we're ready for a motion and say. Yeah, I make a motion that we. Find the funds to buy new technology computers for Rochester teachers. Up to $28,000. Up to $28,000. As, yeah. as a result of, of, of emergency uh, distance learning needs caused by the, by the COVID-19 crisis. Excellent. Perfect, Carl. But does the 
does the wording have to be Rochester? Is that the only place we're planning on replacing? Or would there possibly be one in Stockbridge that needs to be replaced? And we don't want to put a um, restriction on that if it needs to be replaced. The quote is for the current uh, need that Bonnie shared. Yeah. Just the current need. Yeah. Okay. Just, Thank you. just to clarify, because I don't want it to get lost in the discussion, there's also 15 new Chromebooks in there for, for, for students. You. For youngsters. I second the motion. The motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of, of uh, authorizing Bonnie and Lindy to spend up to $28,000 for emergency replacement of teacher and student laptops in response to the COVID-19 crisis signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? A motion has been made and carried. I want to thank the board for your um, for your vote of of confidence in our kids and our teachers. I know this was uh, this was not anticipated, but um, we will certainly put it to excellent good use. And and thank you for your support. Oh, um, lastly, uh, Ray, can you circle back and maybe get Ethan a, a little blurb on just what. Um, uh, technology re re replacement is or, or whatever so we have some text to use um, around around uh, the, the the idea that we're stepping up you know this is this is how we're responding we're stepping up our our, our response and we're moving we're moving the equipment just give us an idea of, of, of what you know what we're replacing and what what era it was so that we've you know we're, we're, we're ahead of the the, the conversation and I'll, could Bonnie uh, and Lindy yes. add that into the could they add that into their newsletter or some sort of communication to the public? Because that's another great way to get it out there, to saying we're replacing. Due we, to we certainly can do that. Yeah. Or put in the principal's report for the for the annual book. Yeah, that would be another thing to do. Right. Well, I just worry that it's, it's you know, the, the parents all see the newsletter and the parents all love the school because they see how well their kids are doing. It's, you know, it's a, a, a lot of our pushback is from people that, you know, don't don't necessarily have that same that's that same vested interest and, and are concerned because they're on fixed incomes and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So the next thing is um, distance learning and online teaching. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just need a clarification for the notes. Uh, do you have to do a roll call on virtual? Uh, well, we did the vote carried unanimously. OK, thank you. That's all I needed to know. I it, yeah I, I generally don't vote because I'm not you know I'm, I'm the chair so I'm not supposed to really vote except to break ties kind of thing. Sorta, of. I mean big issues I have my opinions and I make them pretty known but I usually don't formally vote. Um, distance learning and online teaching. Um, Ethan, I I think you asked to have us put that on. Do you have any specific questions or do you just want us to update on on where we are at this point? Uh. No, I also, you know, we've done a lot of work tonight. Um, I, I, I think it's it's not as urgent for me. It was um, uh, it was about the communication about the parent, the basic, the, the parent thing, you know, about that these are our front our frontline teachers are essentially parents now. They are not teachers. Right. Teachers are doing their best to be mediators and communicators and instigators, but the basically parents are doing it. And probably some students are doing it on their own. Correct. Uh, uh, so I, I, I guess that was just, it was a philosophical statement that I made in my email. And um, um, we wanted to talk about that. Uh, but I, I feel like we've done enough work tonight that I think you got the message. I do want to say something positive, though, because yeah. we've been doing special ed. And they are learning. The teacher, this uh, special ed teacher in Tunbridge made a a photo, a, a Google photo or whatever it was, slide. And those kids are going through lessons. She started at lesson 15 and she's now less than 28 and she's going. And they, those who can get their kids, I mean, they are teaching. And she, we just had a workshop with the special ed teachers the other morning, Lindy attended, where they learned how to make these Google slides. And today, when they got something right, she had a picture of fireworks that were going off. The kids loved it. So there were, you know, there's a lot of 
they're, they're learning, they're going forward and I'm coaching them. I'm giving them teacher support forms. I'm, I'm watching and observing the new superintendents observe the special ed directors observe, and there is learning going on. There is really learning progressing. Is it as much as it would be in the classroom? No, but it's better than anything else that is out there. I guarantee it, especially because this book is right up there. I mean, the kids are seeing it right there. Um, so it's, we're learning. This is not maintenance. This is not chatting with the kids. I instruct them. I start and I go. And I have two third graders from Stockbridge sitting for an hour twice a week. Ethan, the other thing I, the other thing I want to say too, because I think it's, it's crucial. Lindy and I is every day that we move through this, we learn new things. None of us, none of us signed up for this distance learning. In fact, many ways I've stopped calling it distance learning. It's more, it's more crisis learning. We were sort of all thrown into this. One of the things that I'm finding is that it goes on as it goes on further, some parents who are doing, you know, well in the beginning are, are, are starting to feel the stress of it. And we continue to send the message to reach out to us. Um, let us help. Let us just chat. I probably had half as many conversations with parents this week as I have had with youngsters and it's, it's only Tuesday. Um, so we are, uh, we are acknowledging that it is not easy for parents. Uh, they didn't sign up to be teachers. They surely didn't sign up to homeschool. Um, and it is a struggle for some of them. Um, I've asked teachers to check in with all parents this week, sometime between right. yesterday and Friday. Just to ask, how's it going? What do you need? What can we do? Um, how's the pacing going? And we 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 continue to send the message that there's no um there's no one right way to do this it, a family has to look at its structure at its resources and figure out how does this work for us um and we are constantly encouraging teachers to understand that there's a different story in every child's house and we have to adapt to that versus them adapting to us part of part of this came out of just our own personal experience of uh the schedule changing so significantly after vacation, and we'd gotten sort of used to the first schedule, um, and it was working. And then the whole new schedule, meetings every day, and you know we're making it work down to the second week. But it just felt like whoa, we were just getting used to the you know the one thing, right. um, and and also you know my wife Courtney's doing a good job, a really good job of teaching, and then felt like it was sort of getting taken away from her. A little bit of what she'd been handed before and it just i think it was just a consistency okay uh, and i know that's partially you know what what the aoe and the su put down of everything's got to be taught the same and so that we can replace people um but there was just a feeling i think now they've also remembered that thing that they only have to go to one meeting you know per day so that they're 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 accounted for um but uh yeah it was a little bit of fr fr getting some frustration and and some parents who were getting like, you know, I had kids in the uh, uh, first grader was getting nine meetings in a day, you know, uh, on online. Uh, that's a lot for a nine first grader. Ethan, yeah. Ethan, I'd like to comment on my experience. On mm -hmm. um, the as soon as the the continuing of education started, like the day, you know, the week before vacation, on. Um, it worked much better for us that we had structure and we had ex expectations that were assignments that were due at a, uh, by the next morning at 9 a.m. And that was actually helped our schooling at home. So where it may have turned yours upside down, it actually was, it, it, it brought mine back into a better focus um, and better discipline. So, you yeah. know, I just well, wanted I to- they, they, they mentioned that, the, that attendance went up when they put that new policy in. So yeah. I think people took it more seriously. So I think, you know, it's just different experiences and that's just, I'm really glad that teachers are reaching out to parents. I think that's a really excellent, um, uh, a really excellent goal to make some communication happen there. So, cause parents need support in some ways almost more than the kids do. 
Yeah, definitely. No, no question about it. I can't tell you how many parents are shared with me that they didn't sign up to homeschool. Yeah. They don't know how to do it. They're not sure they're doing it right. They're afraid their child's going to fall behind. Yep. And what we try and do is, is really dispel all of that. Good. Good. That's, that's really all I wanted to talk about in distance learning. So I'm fine to move on if everybody else. Yeah. No well, I think it's important that we understand that it's a partnership. And like you said, it's a partnership. Sometimes a student figuring it out for themselves or parents and teachers figuring it out together. But I will share with you, we have friends in another um, SU with kids who are elementary, middle school age, and they meet with just one teacher per day. And are so like math is Mondays, reading is Tuesday, social studies Wednesday, you know, so forth and so forth. That's their only meeting of the day, but they're still expected to be doing all the work the rest of the time so as i shared with stockbridge teachers today it just made me really appreciate what our communities are doing for each other and i say communities because it's taking all hands on deck right now to make this happen mm -hmm. um Great. so i agree i just have to shout out with, with and agree with lindsay wholeheartedly bonnie first of all bonnie and lindsay are doing an incredible job reaching yeah. out to the kids each week, reaching out to the parents. I mean, they're really incredible. And I do, I see, because I, I contact my old districts that I was with, teachers are sending assignments. That's what they're doing mostly. They're sending assignments and the kids get what they're supposed to send in. And teachers have office hours so that if a kid has a question, they can call in. But our teachers are going far beyond that in, in really such a short time that they had to do. So really, it's, it's remarkable what we're doing. I really am, we should be very grateful for the staff and the administration we have. Oh. Okay, anything else uh, regarding distance learning online teaching? Um, grade configuration. Okay, let me just say, I think this is where we start down one of those roads of the unknown. Um, we we're starting to hear a number of things about possible reopening if we reopen. And one of the things we're starting to hear is that we, the, the recommendation might be groups of 10. And so we have configuration at Rochester that was the one we were leaning toward accepting before we close school. Uh, that configuration, if indeed the directive that comes down is groups of no larger than 10, that configuration will not work um, because we don't have enough classrooms. Um, this is where we come back into the high school discussion again, and I, I, I hate to bring that up. I say to Lindy, Lindy sometimes, there's nothing I'd like better than to be rid of that high school building. Um, but the reality is, if we have to go to groups of 10 when we open, um, we don't have nine classrooms in the Rochester Elementary building. So we would have to locate some youngsters into the high school. The or, other thing- Or send kids to Stockbridge. Yeah, I think Lindy, Lindy and I sort of talked about that. I think there's only a room for a few over there. I don't think they could all, I don't think we could manage it, Ethan, in those two elementary buildings. But that certainly was something we would look at. Um, so the reality is we don't have a configuration identified for next year because we're not sure what it's going to need to look like. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and hopefully it, it, we, can, we can make something work. My concern is if, you know, the, if we have to use more space in the high school, we have to heat more of the high school. We have to light more right. of the high school. And then suddenly our budget that's, that's that, you know, hundred dollars per kid is, 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 is blown out of the water. Right. And so I think it's really, really important that we, you know, we maybe we start pushing our legislature. I mean, could we make it work if it was 12 per room? Uh, maybe. We I, mean, looking at, I mean, again, looking at, looking at ways that, that we could be uh, trying to lobby or, or, or push back on, on, on some of these things to, to avoid. I mean, I, I, and Carl, that there are, that I think they will probably be offering schools, or the other option that's being mentioned is that you can go uh, that you could uh, go and split shifts. Some of your kids go to school from eight to eleven. Your other kids go to school from twelve to three. Um, they're really being 
but again, there's been no direction from the AOE. It's too early for any of that. My only point is that we need to know what the recommendations for opening are going to be before we can land on a configuration. Okay. Right. Thank Good. you. Thank um, all right, uh, building, building use request. We have a request from um, the Rochester Emergency Management Group. Um, they are anticipating need for expanded uh, food shelf need as this pandemic moves on. Um, they are anticipating that people will, some will not go back to work who have lost their jobs, some will work through their savings and um, they're looking for additional spaces to uh, put a food shelf in. They're looking at the um, basement of the town offices, which they say could work. There's some pros and some cons. Um, and then Vic and I were chit-chatting about the high school and um, he wanted me to ask if the board would uh, even allow him to pursue the possibility of uh, using some room in the high school as an expanded food shelf if it were necessary. He's not asking for approval tonight, just support from the board for him to um, move forward and figure out what it would take and if it would even be a possibility. Can you, Bonnie, think of any reasons why that's not a good idea? I cannot at the high school, no. Um, which entrance would they be using? Would we be able to keep the, the two areas physically isolated, like put plastic over the barriers so that yeah. our kids on one side of the building and the, the heat, the, the forced air heat doesn't move uh, atmosphere or, or air really between those two areas? I mean, that's uh, what I, I was I, curious about. I would, have to look in, I would have to look into that, Carl. Those are the, before we can give him approval, we need to know that we could be keeping the kids, you know, virus free from the people that are coming in and out of there because it's our, you know, I don't want us to be having them using our doors or, or us having to worry about people's temperatures and all those those sorts of pieces. You know what? I think these people are so careful. This is this is a community group that that is we have a we have an issue here of people not eating, guys. No, I, mean, I, I think understand. Well, but I don't I don't I think that we obviously look at our look at our administration, look at our leadership. We're gonna have people who are gonna make sure that our kids are safe as we are. And All I right. think we're we're going for that. Let's see a plan before to we go agree. forward to at least examine it. How can we refuse someone who wants to put a food shelf in our school? Just, we just, can't. just let me be clear though. I, I'm not asking for the board's permission tonight to do anything uh, right. in terms of approval. I, I just want permission to have him come over, look around, figure sure. out would it possibly works. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'd like. To, I, I'd like the proposal to Excellent. answer those kinds of questions. Right. Can we keep the kids isolated so that germs aren't spreading to yeah. between the two communities? Can they use separate entrances and exits? The last thing I would suggest that we could look into okay. is if is that if part of the issue with using the um, the uh, uh, town basement or another or, or or another space where you wouldn't have the problems about public being around uh, uh, around kid kids would be that if there was stuff that needed to be stored if they needed to move things out of part of the town hall or out of somewhere what we can do without having to heat an extra part of the building or or or, or anything like that what we can do is free up space by by letting them letting them stack old documents or whatever file cabinets or things that they have down there because we can give the town secure storage um which might free up uh, which might free up spaces for for a more public facing Public well, you know that's why we have to say, Vic, go ahead and look look at it. That's part well, that's, of it. I'm not, I'm not saying no one should not look at it. I just want to make sure we answer these particular questions. There's right. many exits in the high school. There's many. Okay. There's very. There's many rooms that can be completely isolated because there's exterior exits. I think we should go ahead and let them investigate it. Absolutely. Carl, let me, Carl, just let me answer this point because I think it is a valid one. I just want to expand on what Amy said a bit. The rooms that we would look at would be rooms that could be um, could be shut off and that have exterior exits. So they wouldn't even be coming through the building. Now, in terms of what is the heat system going to move around, I don't have the expertise to answer that question. I'd have to ask someone else that question. 
but there are parts of that building that can be um, completely completely shut off. And we right. and I would think they would probably need more than a room because if they're going to be there for any period of time, they're going to need access to a bathroom. Yeah. Um, so we need to we need to think about you know where. Do you know, where I think this is all this now, guys. At, at ten of nine, I, Vic's going to be examine it. He'll let us know when he does his his um. His, his see if it's even viable for him. So all of this, let's just wait to see what he says. Absolutely. Okay, so that's number one. Let me ask number two. And again, I do not need an answer tonight. We had another request uh, from the select board to see if the uh, school board would allow use of the gymnasium for um, their vote in November. And I shared with them that I couldn't speak for the board, but that I would have personally myself, I would have some reservations about bringing six or 700 people into the gym to vote. I would far prefer if the board wants to support that initiative that they use the What's commons in the high school. In November. The presidential election. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember that? So it could be a voting location, is what you're yes. saying. Yes. With more oh space. my God. No, okay. Jamie. Well, again, I think I, I think we're going to be in a whole new world then. And as we, you know, I don't, you know, the the polling booths are going to have to look so much different with so much extra protection and stuff. Um, we'll find a way. I do, I do think you need to support the democratic process. I guess what I would be hoping for is that the That's board the process. I think. The party. I think what I would be hoping oh, for is that the board might support me in my thinking that they should use the commons area in the high school versus the gymnasium, which is also is the kids cafeteria, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, and we 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 are planning to at least on our schedule. We don't take we're not taking uh, the the that Tuesday off, right? So the, the kids would be the, the the kids would be there. Yeah, no, I, would, I my suggestion would be it's in the separate building, and you know we tell Dune, you know, figure out how we can do it. You know, the commons along the backside, or you know that that that, that sort of thinking, and you know, look at what the capacity recommendations may be. They may have to line up outside and. Where would those outside lines be towards where they park the buses and not towards right. the, the elementary school? Exactly. You know, but again, I, I just could get, think about all the logistics and the safety and, and give us a proposal. I certainly support them using that building. Okay. So right now we're exploring both and we'll be back with a plan if, if it works out for either one of them based on the conditions that we give them. Good. So here's one more building use in Stockbridge. Um, there's a blood drive that typically happens in May on the 16th. Uh, the Red Cross has its own set of guidelines. They only let X number of people in. They take everybody's temperature. Um, they follow all sorts of social dis distancing. I actually feel more comfortable them coming in the building than myself <laughs> going in the building, quite frankly. But um, I just want, and then we have the custodian come in and clean after the fact. <laughs> I'm, I'm O positive, so the the Red Cross is, always hounds me to give blood, and I give blood all the time. I've done a blood drive uh, uh, the, the 18th or 15th of April, um, and so I saw the the the, the, the post COVID uh, preparations, and they are they are thorough. There is someone outside the door. You're having temperature taken with one of those uh, remote probes before you even get into the building. Um, and they're so, yeah, I mean, if, if, if they still wanted to, and they also, they limit, they limited the beds. They didn't have as many beds as they usually did. Right. So I, 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 I would support, you know, any community use. Of I, I, I was going to say, I hated to turn them down in a time where I know that a uh, blood drive is so important right now. And this had been scheduled over a year out. Um, but those are the precautions we took in April or actually March, I think before this really took off. Um, so I just wanted to make sure everybody's okay with that. Right, because Stockbridge did a blood drive just a month or two ago, is that correct? Right yeah. before this really got, I think like the weekend that we ended up closing school is the weekend they yeah. had a blood drive or maybe right after that. I can't remember which. 
I think it was like for, uh, March 14th. Yeah. Right. And and I want to say it's either that Saturday before they had a blood drive at Stockbridge and we had the custodian come in immediately after because we thought people were going to be back on Monday or it was the weekend after. Either way, he came in right afterwards to clean all spaces that had been used. They just had one in, in Pierce Hall in Rochester and uh, my cousin said it was like trying to get into a nuclear arsenal. That's how yeah. they have everything arranged. So. Yeah, I'm no problem with that that happening. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes right. it's easier than voice call. Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. <laughs> um. So I guess uh, before we go into e executive session for the purposes of the recording, the next uh, message is the next meeting is going to be a uh, special meeting on. Uh, May 12th, uh, virtually at 6.30. Um, and uh, the next regular meeting is Tuesday, June 2nd. That will also be at 6.30 in the internet. Um, that is our regular meeting. Um, we are now going to go into our, our, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss- One quick, one quick thing, Carl, sorry. Um, yeah. I sent out an email earlier or last week, I can't remember when, on um, about Encore Renewable. They want to do a presentation. When oh. would you like that to happen, next week or your June meeting? Uh, let's have it our June meeting. Okay, I'll let her know. Thank you. Unless anyone wants to, to hear a presentation sooner. Not a special meeting. we got plenty to do. Exactly, I figured. I, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to just uh, make a decision for everyone. Um, all right, so uh, we're going into executive session. Thank you, everybody. Um